Hi, I'm Matthew and this is Chris. Uh, we're both from uh, Premier Equipment and uh, we're going to give you tips and tricks to uh, start your uh, planner season for uh, 2021. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the start of the planner. And right here at the hitch is where we start. So you want to make sure you have the hoses in configured properly, have the draw bolt in securely, and then we're going to follow the frame back. And during planning, we're going to want the plane, uh, frame flat, so basically on the flat level. So you can set a coffee cup on there and it's not going to spill over. That's proper planning depth. All right, yeah, when we're talking about parallel, we want to look at these parallel arms. We want those to be straight out the back for proper planning seating depth. Next, we're going to talk about the row units. So when we're talking about that, we're going to go ahead and raise it up. Also, when we're talking about frame adjustment, we want to talk about adjusting the markers. We want these properly to be in the center of the machine on your next pass. And also we want this disc set so that it's aggressive enough for the soil conditions that you're in. Hi there, we're gonna go over the basic uh, setups and things to look for on uh, a John Deere um, Max Emerge row unit here. Um, one thing to make sure you've got adjusted is your uh, down force here. Uh, you can have either uh, air, uh, spring force, or now you can get uh, hydraulic downforce pressure. The trash whippers, you want to make sure you have them adjusted so they just scuff the ground, um, just so it's moving that trash away from the uh, seed trench. A good thing to check on the uh, double disc openers is the uh, pinch point. So uh, what guys are doing is, is putting a, a business card in between here and you want to measure to make sure you've got uh, a two inch uh, contact point between the two discs. To tell if they are worn out, uh, the John Deere spec is 15 inches brand new. Um, if you want uh, a worn out one is anything less than 14 inches, so they should be replaced after that. Gauge wheels, we always adjust them uh, so that the wheel just scrubs along the, uh, the seat disc. Um, to prevent trash from going into the uh, between the gauge wheels. Um, your seed depth here is, is controlled by this gauge here. You want to make sure you check your seed depth uh, every year. As your discs wear down, uh, they uh, tend to come up the seed, so you want to make sure. Back here you have your uh, press wheels or your closing wheels. Um, make sure you have this adjusted to the proper pressure. Um, make sure your, your press wheels are tracking in behind the uh, seed trench to uh, close that seed trench up properly. Uh, this one you can see is, is off to one side. While we're back here talking about the row unit, we'll actually talk about the inner components as well. So here we have the uh, seed tube. The seed tube, you want to verify that the uh, ocular lens is actually clean. And you want to make sure that the seed tube is not worn on the sides from rubbing on the opener discs. Also, when you're back here, it's a good time to check the drive chains and sprockets to verify that the tensioner is working properly and that the chains aren't wore out. Generally, what you want to do is lubricate these chains every season, but not over lubricate them so dust sticks to them. All right, when we're looking at the row unit too, we see that this one here has a fertilizer option of pop-up through a Keaton seed firmer. So you'll have a few op different options, whether it's liquid or dry. Uh, dry is usually trench in the front. So you want to, when you have dry, you want to verify that whether it's single disc openers or, or double disc openers, that the true V part is working properly and everything's not seized up and everything's tight and working. More frame components here. So when we're back here, we want to verify that the hydraulic cylinder is not leaking. So this one here has a, maybe a slight bit of seepage, but nothing to worry, too worried about. Also too, we're going to check the arms, verify that the bearings are okay in the transport wheels. And then we'll move across here to the vacuum motor. That's another spot there that you want to check for leakage. So verify the vacuum motor is working like it's supposed to. And usually I look up the plenum and verify that there's no oil coming out. So that plenum right there. Hi, now we're going to look at a uh, John Deere uh, vacuum meter. Um, just kind of some of the things to check over. Uh, this one here is off uh, Pro Series and there's a, a variety of uh, meters that you can get like uh, Exact Emerge. Uh, ESET, uh, the list goes on, depending on the box type or you got the three bushel hoppers. Um, but anyways, we're going to look at this one. Um, and things to look for on uh, these uh, vacuum meters. Uh, 
a good thing to look at is these knockout wheels here. Uh, what they tend to do is they wear out and then they fall off the, uh, the spool here. They uh, typically need to be replaced. Um, vacuum seals is uh, critical. Um, if they get any cuts, tears, or anything like that, then the vacuum drops off and you lose population. Um, these are kind of wear points that uh, need to be replaced every once in a while. Um, the meter here, good uh, setup procedure is to uh, make sure that your, your meter turns about one full turn when it's just giving it a flick with the wrist. Um, the seed disc itself, um, you want to make sure that uh, you don't have uh, substantial wear on the disc itself or the, the vacuum seal will not seal properly. Um, discs vary. Um, these are uh, Promax 40 discs, which are the uh, newest from John Deere. Um, now, discs vary to go to soybeans, um, corn, um, edible beans, that kind of stuff. So. Uh, Pick the proper disc for the uh, crop that you're uh, planting. Um, brushes inside the meter here. Um, anything that's missing, like um, bristles missing, gaps in between the brushes, uh, that kind of stuff, is all critical uh, components of, uh, of a vacuum meter. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the uh, doubles eliminator in the uh, vacuum meter. Uh, you want to make sure that that eliminator for corn discs uh, is adjusted to uh, half the hole. So you want to make sure half your hole is covered up. Those are just the basic planter fundamentals and it's like the basic checkover stuff on the row unit, the planter frame and the vacuum units. So if you have any more questions, by all means, call your Premier dealer. Hey everybody, it's Graham Burton here, Precision Ag Manager with Premier Equipment. And after we've seen Matt and Chris walk us around the planter, we're going to go up into the cab here and make sure we're all set up from the displays and receiver side. It's important to mention that I'm using the display simulator here that John Deere offers on myjohndeere.com to anybody publicly. Some other things to mention before we get going to the field is to ensure that our displays and receivers are up to date. As we know, John Deere came out with a 20-2 mandatory software update for the receivers and that's why we have to check if our receivers for our 6000s are on software version 4.40p and our 3000s are on 2.80s. A quick way to check this on a Gen 4 as seen here is clicking on the timestamp and then under the Starfire symbol you'll see software version and this one for the Starfire 6000 has to be on 4.40p and again for the 3000 it has to be 2.80s. The next thing um, to help with some headaches in the spring is to ensure that our TCM, our terrain compensation module, is calibrated. A quick way to do this again in this Gen 4 is clicking on your Starfire here and under the Setup tab, you'll see here the Cal. And it will walk you through, through this procedure of lining up your rear fixed axle with a line on the ground, doing a circle, coming back, and again, driving over that line to ensure that that pitch and roll of that tractor is in relation. Now that we've made sure everything's going to operate correctly, we need to make sure that we document and set up everything here, whether it's a planter or any type of implement to ensure we're documenting across that field. On this Gen 4 here, we're going to click on the Setup tab and under Location, this is where we imp input our client farm field. This is very important and nothing will document painting on that screen as we call it, without having that client farm feel in there. It's important to be careful here and not just put in 111 or ABC because for data management practices, it's really important to have the actual name of that field in there for future years. Once we're done there, we want to double check all of our offsets and measurements for our tractor profile and our implement profile. This will really help us with headaches in the track spacings and row to row guidance if all that implement um, documentation is correct. The next one is under the work summary here for a planter for example. You want to make sure that that crop is inputted there, for example here corn and the variety 9188 and this is how we would do any type of advanced settings here on the Gen 4 for single across it, um, planter, dual or custom if you happen to be doing a plot in that field. The next one would be the target rate telling it that planter how many seeds per acre it's putting in there. 
Under here, you'd click set and type in how many seeds per acre. And as many people ask, how do I put in a prescription? If you've uploaded that prescription to this display, you can pull it in here from files. It's also important to show how to set up documentation data on a GreenStar 3 2630 display, if that's what you have. First, we will click here at menu and then green star and we want to click resources machine implement documentation and guidance we'll click, click accept and it'll start walking us through these steps just like the gen 4 we have to set up client farm and field and task then we'll click f for next page we'll set up the machine profile as mentioned before making sure that those offsets are accurate We'll do the implement profile, again, making sure that those offset measurements are accurate. We'll set up our operation and then our tracking mode. You can leave this one till later until you're in the field and deciding to make that AB line. An awesome feature that John Deere added to the operation center platform for this spring is the work planner tool. This tool is primarily to ease up that time spent setting up your documentation data for those tasks. If we look here in the work planner tab underneath plan, we see here we'll click for seeding, season 2021, we'll go plan seeding, crop would be corn, variety would be a pre-selected variety, and then we can click next, and we would pick a field and click next again. We can choose our rates, just like we would do there in the cab. 32,000 for us. And here you could include any guidance lines that would be loaded into that field, including the ones from last year to follow those guidance lines. We can then click save and easily send this to a piece of equipment wirelessly using JD Link and that setup data will be waiting in that cab to, to ensure that you have a quick entrance to that field and get that planter going. We hope you have a successful spring season. Please reach out to your local Premier Equipment location if you have any questions. Thank you and have a good day.